Dr. Bredesen once again saying, in order to get effective improvements in Alzheimer's, we must address the underlying causes of disease and focus on combination strategies, a comprehensive, network-based, synergistic approach. That's what we're going to be focusing on here. Now, let's jump into case study number one. Now, these, these are two of the first 10 patients that Dr. Bredesen saw as he developed this comprehensive, this novel approach of treatment, where it's so novel that we're actually doing more than one treatment at the same time. And as you'll see, his treatment strategies included 25 distinctly different strategies. You might think that that's laborious. I say it was brilliant. Because in those first 10 people that came to see him, nine out of 10 of them reversed their cognitive dementia within three to six months. Most of them already had early Alzheimer's disease. Some of them had had Alzheimer's for over six to 10 years. Powerful. Just 10 people. You can't tell me if the first 10 people that come to see me get reversal, that early, that dementia, that that's not a major dramatic effect. Dr. Bredesen has gone on to say that in the, in the two years since he initially published that research, he now has, has over 100 patients who have gone through the very same program with similar results. So the question that we need to be asking is, why and what? What is it? What is it that they actually did? What is this combined approach that leads to that, that amazing ability, that tipping point to achieve more optimal wellness? So I'm going to share with you two case studies. The first is this is a 67-year-old traveling business analyst. She is an executive, well known for ability, her uncanny ability to, to look at all the data of any corporation. And on the fly, literally while she's traveling with her, with her uh, uh, notebook computer, putting together reports with all kinds of data points that she just listened to and heard about. And by the end of the weekend, she has a comprehensive report that she mails, emails off to all the board members of that corporation. And so she was in high demand. She was traveling all over the United States providing this type of consultation. But then she started noticing that her cognitive abilities were on the decline. For two years, she had noticed that as she's, as she's just driving in her neighborhood, she turns down the wrong street. This is her own neighborhood she's lived in for many years. Kind of having this, where am I, moment. She noticed that, that as she goes into her house, she's lived in for over 10 years, and she goes to flip the light switch on, and there's no light switch there. She's calling her pets the wrong names. She's reading, she's reading a page in uh, one of her favorite books to only realize that everything she's read for the last few minutes, she can't remember any of it. She, she becomes very concerned because you see her mother had suffered horrible effects of Alzheimer's disease for over a decade, 15 years actually, and had lived in an Alzheimer's care facility for her last 10 years. Very concerned, she goes to her doctor. She explains her condition, her concerns to her doctor. And her doctor says to her, well, your mother had Alzheimer's. Everything that you're telling me Sounds like that you're into early Alzheimer's. 
There's not a thing we can do about it. He proceeds to write memory problems in her chart. Immediately she realizes what she needs to do. She needs to go get long-term ter- long care insurance because she's going to need long-term care insurance. But like any good insurance company, they do their homework and request notes from all her medical visits. And the analyst at the insurance company sees memory problems written in her chart and checks the denial part of the application. She gets that news and is distraught because that, in her mind, was her last hope that, that to, to not become bankrupt, that, that was her last hope to have some sense of stability knowing that she was being cared for as she was no longer in control of her mental faculties. Despondent, she actually calls her best friend in San Francisco. And they both cry on the phone as she relates her experience. Because see, she's contemplating suicide because she doesn't see any other more effective way out. And friend says, no, please, please don't do that. Come stay with me for at least a week. Her friend immediately starts calling around, starts trying to ask the question why, what, and what, what do I do? How do I, what do I do for my friend to keep her from committing suicide? It's clear to her that she has to find some sense of hope to share with her friend, but where is hope to be found in a condition that is considered incurable? So she calls up Dr. Del Bredesen's office and gets an appointment with him for her friend. Three months later, she is not only back on her high-demand job, but her memory is better than it had been for years. Three months! And we're going to be sharing with you the things that she did. Second case study is a 